Okay, let's get started. And a couple of quick introductions to begin with. My name is Chris. I work in product marketing at Kanos. And I'm really delighted to be joined by a talented set of panelists today. Susanna, would you take a moment, a moment to introduce yourself, please? Hello, and uh, thank you for having me. My name is Susanna, and I'm responsible for the global implementation of the employee document management solution at Hilti. Hi, everyone. I'm Elian, head of product delivery. It's great to be here with you all today. Hey, everybody. Fantastic to be here. I'm John McMahon, and I look after the product management of Kenos Employee Document Management. Okay, in terms of our agenda, we've got a session planned to run for about 45 minutes. Firstly, we'll cover some common document management challenges. Next, we'll move on to our product showcase, a demonstration of the powerful HR document solution we built for Workday, and then leaving the best to last, Susanna, who we're really honored to have on the call today, will share some real life insight into how Hilti Group's HR transformation program has gone along and how Kanos EDM has played an important role. Let's take a look at the challenges. So we began discussing the concept for document management um, in Workday roughly four years ago. And since then, we've spoken with over 200 customers across different sectors about the main challenges that they were facing within this area. And the same three themes came out consistently from those conversations, challenges around employee experience, compliance obligations, process efficiency were mentioned time and time again. But one underlying theme, which we really can't underestimate, was the real desire to solve all of these challenges inside Workday. And with that being said, Workday is the HR system of record, so HR documents should also be there using the same data, the same security model, and the same UI. So if we take a look at our first theme being employee experience, where employee relates to both HR personnel and employees. And really when there's no consistency where these documents are stored, it makes it very difficult to actually find the documents as well as being very time consuming. And this is made even worse when there's different storage options for different countries. So if you imagine a shared HR operations team having to look in different places depending on where the employee is based. And one of our customers within the manufacturing industry has had a lot of international transfers and it really highlighted to them that it was almost impossible to find the employee documents. Even inside Workday, there can be different places to find different documents. And a lot of the time it's the employee themselves looking to find their own information. So whether that's a contract or an offer letter, and if employees can't self-serve, then ultimately these requests go to HR. And again, that's a, you know, a drain on valuable time. The next theme, and probably the one that came out the most, was compliance. It's surprising how many customers don't have appropriate controls around document retention and purging, and how manual and time consuming it's become to be compliant with constantly data and um, privacy legislation changes. And I'm sure you know many of you are aware of the challenges with legislation such as GDPR is that it's applied differently in every country. So it's not exactly a one size fits all. And it really gets quite granular when there are different retention and purging rules for different types of documents. So when we were working with one of our financial services customers based in the UK, they were spread across 30 countries and it really highlighted the risks associated with audits and fines as really the key driver to move into KNL CDM. And we really can't talk about compliance, you know, without talking about security and access. You know, we've heard from several customers that they want to have control over, you know, privacy legislation, but they don't want to have to configure security in multiple systems because I'm sure you can imagine it's a lot of work. One of our customers that our team is currently onboarding, and they've recently moved to KNL CDM from a third party document management product. And for them, trying to keep security up to date in different systems was a nightmare. The other system had no awareness of workday security rules and groups and no awareness of the organizational structure. And really, you know, fragmentation caused by different systems being in place is the biggest challenge of all of this. You know, compliance is hard, but compliance is even more difficult when you need to configure complex policies and security across multiple systems. And the final theme that we're gonna look at is process efficiency. You know, we heard from our customers how much effort's involved in producing, distributing, and filing documents you know, for employees and candidates. Many organizations you know, are still preparing 
HR documents like offer letters and contracts, which I mentioned before is very time consuming, but it's also prone to errors. Workday, you know, they've made progress in document generation, but there's still limitations, you know, especially for global operations who are using, you know, a lot of templates. They need different e-signature types, such as advanced or qualified. And one of our customers was finding it was taking upward of two weeks from document generation to get in a receipt of a sign signed contract. And really two weeks is a long time, especially in such a competitive market. Within Workday, you know, you've got some document generation capabilities, but some organizations need version control. They need the ability to be able to send bundle of documents and use advanced e signatures. And really, this is all magnified when you need to send out, you know, dynamic documents in mass. So, for example, if you had 5000 employees, you know, it's even harder when documents all need to be signed and filed correctly. So for us, you know, it was important that we were able to build a product that solved all of these challenges and more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through um, a little look at our application. When we looked at the three challenges that Elaine has just set out, we saw how we could create an application that could ameliorate those and basically solve them right inside Workday. As Elaine mentioned, Workday does have some document uh, capabilities, but we wanted to expand beyond those and be able to align with what Workday does, but simultaneously solve the challenges of global organizations. Workday are our partner, and we want to ensure that we have their approval and blessing before we set out creating an application. So I'm delighted to say that Kenos EDM is an approved Workday solution. And what that means is Workday could see the gap that we were going to fill for their customers. Workday's product team could see that there was clear water between what we were doing and what they were doing. They also went through and did a technical review of all of our application to ensure that the delivery assurance validation that you'd expect for something inside Workday was done in the same rigorous methods that they would have for any of their own modules. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through three different demo scenarios here today. And these align to those three challenges that Elaine set out. The first of which is enhancing the employee experience. If you've got all of your documents in SharePoint and filing cabinets and different document ma management systems across the world, it means that HR never have this single view of people and documents in one place. In our demo, we're gonna show how you can achieve that, how you can have that single view of documents and data in a central place. We're also gonna show how things like legal holds can be set inside Workday so that they're not maintained on spreadsheets or in separate case management systems. We're also, that, we're also then gonna show how you can report upon all of this data and documents inside Workday meaning that you can get real insights directly out of Workday rather than having to manipulate it from multiple different applications. And to give you some insight, one of our organizations that we're onboarding, they're moving from eight separate document repositories to one single view of their documents inside Workday. So let's have a look. So as I mentioned, what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a look at some user stories. And what we're going to do is we're going to log in as Joy. Joy has got access to all document categories because she works in HR. And directly from any location in Workday, she can jump straight to the, the documents for an employee. You'll notice that there are lots of document categories. And these categories are whatever your organization wants them to be. So if you want a single view of your types of types and categories of documents right inside Workday, it can reflect the way you want it to be. So here, Joy's jumping between all of the different document categories and types that relate to John. She's noticed that jo there needs to be a legal hold set against John because there's litigation that's going to be set up. No more does that have to be monitored or held in a separate application. Joy has asked Logan if she can set that inside Workday. Now, when Logan does it, she's going to the search bar. So just like any custom task or any task in Workday, she can load John's documents directly from the search bar. 
Now, Logan's a HR administrator, which means she has additional functionality beyond Joy. So security inside Workday is being used here to ensure that Logan can set a legal hold. What this means is that no documents can be deleted. No documents will be automatically purged as a result of this. So a single view of documents and data in one place, legal hold being able to set in one place. Now, as the scenario says here, wouldn't it be good if you could then say, OK, which employees are on legal hold? Well, all of the data, all of the documents are now in Workday, which means you get much more advanced reporting. So here I can instantly see the legal hold that's been set against John, whilst also getting the audit of what was recorded as the rationale for doing so. And that reporting extends far beyond simply just legal holds. If I wanted to, for example, find every employee that's missing a certain type of document, imagine how much work that would be if you were having to go into all of your existing repositories. Here, we're saying, find me every employee that's missing medical insurance, and it's instantly found. Next, I want to see all of the in-flight document generation flows that are currently taking place. So I want to know which documents have been generated, which ones have been completed for a specific supervisory organization. Well, now all of that data is inside Workday. So if I wanted to look for all of the in-progress documents that have been generated, I can do that reporting directly inside Workday. And that means that I can follow up on people, I can chase people, especially if an e-signature is outstanding with one of my team. So in summary, the beauty of having everything in one place is not only do you get the benefit of both HR having a better experience, employees can have self-service access, things like legal hold, which would normally be separate or held inside Workday, and your reporting becomes vastly more powerful. And of course, because the reporting is in Workday, you can create your own reports. So you could create charts and graphs um, aligning to exactly the way you want the reports to look. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavor of how we can um, deliver really great um, employee experiences inside Workday. Now, the second use case is going to cover two different things. The first of which is it's going to show you how security means that that single view of documents that you saw a second ago is filtered based upon somebody's access rights. We're then going to go on and show how document retention and purging can be set up directly inside Workday. Now, Workday has a layer of uh, a level of document purging today, but for global organizations that span across multiple different jurisdictions, they need a much, much richer level of granularity on that document retention and purging. And without that, you could be facing um, issues with audits. And obviously, the big problem of massive fines is a consequence of not having got rid of documents. So we're going to briefly show how the security element is in place in the system, as well as how document retention and purging can be set. As the note says here, security and user access is important both from a setup and maintenance perspective. Kanos EDM is inside Workday which means you don't have to separately maintain two sets of users and security. So here's Chad Anderson. Chad Anderson is a benefit analyst. Now he's looking at the same employee, John McMahon, using the view worker documents view. But what you'll notice is that when Chad loads John's um, view worker documents, he is not seeing the, the whole spectrum of documents that both Joy and Logan could access. He's limited to a subset of those, and that's leveraging Workday security to do that. Now, the second scenario that I mentioned we would show is how you set up retention and purging inside Workday. What you'll notice here is that just from the search bar, I can go to a new and dedicated function, which is going to enable me to set up a retention and purging policy for a country. In this case, we're selecting Germany. When we select Germany, it shows us the companies that will be affected by that because we've got that tight integration in Workday. And then we're going to set up a category specific retention rule. So you can see here that for German absence documents, the minimum retention period is three years from hire date. 
the maximum retention period is 10 years from termination date. So the laws of each individual country, right down to category level, can be set up inside Workday. But some countries have got even more complexity, Germany being one of them. And what you can see here is that there are exceptions to the rule. So rather than it being 10 years from termination for sickness certificates, there's actually an exception, which is that sickness certificates should be held for four years from the legal start date. So what this basically means, and you can see this here where we're adding a rule for disability documents, is it means you can add in all of your retention rules directly into Workday. And then every day there's a process running to check to see if documents that exist in your tenant have met those policies. So it essentially means that you can sleep easy at night. The compliance officers are not worrying about potential issues with audits because everything is happening in a fully automated manner. And just to summarize that, because I'm conscious these videos whiz by relatively fast, what we're saying is rather than document purging simply being seven years from termination, get rid of everything, we're saying for each of your countries, for each category within that country, and even for each type of document that exists inside a category, it's possible to set up a retention and a purging policy. Meaning people can't delete documents before they get to a certain point, and that documents will automatically be purged when they get to the purging point. So all of this right inside Workday. Next up, process efficiency. So with process efficiency, what we wanted to do with document generation was ensure that it didn't matter whether a document was being generated from a business process, whether it was being needed to be done ad hoc or whether it needed to be done in bulk, we wanted to have one global standard method for doing that. And importantly, we wanted to empower HR operations and HR services which Susanna will elaborate on, we wanted to empower them to be able to affect this change themselves, that there were no bottlenecks from IT, that they could get their documents generating directly out of Workday without the need for support from IT. What we're gonna show in this um, demo is we're gonna show how document templates are added to the system, how the document templates themselves are created in Microsoft Word, or Google Docs, therefore enabling non-technical users to be able to set them up. And we're then also going to show you an actual flow of documents being generated right out of the change job business process. So without further ado, let's go have a look. As I mentioned, we're going to look at document templates first. And what you'll see is that here we have David Spiegel who works in HR services. He wants to look at a document template that relates to change jobs. The way he does that is he goes into My Templates, a new dedicated function, selects the company. In this case, we've got Switzerland. And then he can look at all of the templates for that country. What you'll notice is that there's the ability to see versions of documents. So David can ensure that he's looking at the right version. We can have whole version management to jump forward to older versions. We can set up e-signature, such as advanced e-signature with a couple of clicks and qualified e-signature with a couple of clicks as well. You'll also see here, by clicking on the document, we can download a version of the template. Here, there is no limit on the formatting. So no limits on one font. You've got two fonts in this template. There's even a gradient on one of the fonts in here. So the templates can reflect your branding exactly the way you want it to be meaning that when you generate a document, not only was that done by somebody that's non-technical, it can look exactly the way you want to. Here we can see individual pieces of content which will be shown or hidden based upon data that's held inside Workday. Now, that template that we've just walked you through, we're actually gonna show a business process generating it directly out of Workday. So Kenos EDM right inside Workday, meaning that the user experience is totally seamless. I'm gonna go ahead and do a change job here for Lara. Lara is reducing her hours. She's 
won the lottery and she wants to have less hours in, of work in her life. So she's reducing her hours from 36 to 12. She lives in Switzerland, so I'm sure she'll be out hiking, rollerblading down by the canals that they have there, having a great time. So her hours have been reduced, her compensation and her FTE percentage have been reduced as well. The next step is the person can then look at the data that was is going to be used in the document generation flow. So you can see it's just an inbox item and we can review the content that will be put into the document before it gets generated. We can even add non-workday non data. So if we want to include some non-workday data in the document generation, then we can do that too. Now in HR, we can then say, okay, we want to check the document before we issue it, or Logan might want to write a custom note to Lara as a part of the flow. And that's what we're going to do here. So we've generated two documents for review, but we also want to send Lara a custom little message that will get sent as a part of the e-sign flow. So HR has generated the document from the business process. Lara now needs to sign that. Our seamless integration with DocuSign and Adobe Sign means that that flow automatically sends an email out to Lara. That text that we typed inside Workday has found its way into the body of the email that you can see here. That seamless integration is about ensuring that you get that ultimate experience. Here we can see our template. It's been fully personalized based upon the information from the business process. We can see that her hours have gone from 36 to 12, the FTE percentage is there, her new salary is showing, and all of the dynamic content that we wanted to show, like the non-workday data, is there too. If we click to sign, it jumps us to the relevant points. And when Lara's happy with that, because it's an advanced type of e-signature, she gets sent a text message or an SMS. That proves her identity and ensures that you have that advanced level of e-signature, which means that the contract is legally binding in the countries that need that. Of course, the document's signed now, so what happens? Well, it's filed automatically into Workday with the correct category, the correct type, meaning that instantly the document is going to have the correct retention and purging rules, and it's instantly going to have the correct security associated with it as well. That was a whistle-stop tour of our application, showing how that we solve for these three challenges of experience, compliance, and process efficiency. It's all in Workday, and I hope you enjoyed this little preview, but to do a much better job of explaining how this can impact your business in practice, I'm gonna hand over to the amazing uh, presenter that is Susanna Roskosna. Over to you, Susanna. Thank you, John, and welcome from Healthy's headquarters in Schaan, Liechtenstein. So Healthy, uh, we stand for innovation and a direct customer relationships. Our purpose is making construction better based on a passionate and inclusive global team and a caring and performance oriented culture. And the innovation, that's what we are reflecting in HR as well. So we started our transformation journey in 2018, uh, implemented Workday in 2020, starting out with core HR modules, then over time, uh, expanding the offering in a phase delivery to enable our people to have ownership of their development and transparency on the essential parts of their employee experience at Hilti. For us, um, it's basically all about engagement. Our goal is to have easy to use processes and systems that enable high quality interactions and outcomes between our team members, their team leaders and HR. And all that through inclusive, transparent, simple and lean employee centric processes, reducing the process burden and increasing the efficiency insights and transparency. From the scope, we are using core workday modules but the document management was the one missing piece for us. Our document management was very fragmented, different market organizations, storing documents, being in SAP SharePoint, or even keeping papers. And our aim with employee document management was to centralize everything in one place in Workday 
and leverage workday security configuration we have, organization structure, and employee data we are maintaining. So from the functional scope, we needed to cover document generation, electronic signatures, and document storage. Everything linked, streamlined, having automated flows as much as possible, because our ultimate goal is to make the life of our HR team easier and not more difficult, uh, cutting down the manual administration, creating more time for value adding work. We also wanted to be more transparent towards our employees, giving them direct access to their own documents. So we joined forces with Kynos as design partner for the employee document management solution. So we are live in 11 countries in Europe and Northern America since December 2022, so almost a year now, and continuing global implementation around the world. And we can already see benefits for our main stakeholders. By using new templates, features, and document generation processes, we could cut down the contract creation time roughly by half. And also about half of our contracts are now signed and stored within 24 hours. And before, like Elaine mentioned, it could take even up to two weeks in some cases in global organization and people sitting in different locations. So in general, we are receiving positive feedback from our end users. HR services, they like having the full control over their contract templates, have them all in one place. They can also be sure that correct template versions will always be selected for their document generation. Pulling in workday data during document generation um, makes the contract drafting easier and faster. And HR also appreciates saving time and cutting manual work thanks to the integration with DocuSign, which is ensuring that digitally signed documents are automatically stored back on worker profile and workday under the correct document category and type. HR can find anything they need much faster and they don't need to search in papers or SharePoints anymore because all the documents being it generated documents, manually uploaded or Workday BP attachments are all accessible for the defined users from one place in Workday or Worker Profile. With the document company of origin concept and Edita security metrics we set up, we can ensure that access to documents strictly follows the need to know principle and granular retention rules for each country also help us being fully GDPR compliant. And our employees and candidates, they like the intuitive, user-friendly and fast e-signing process. And employees also really appreciate the transparency we try to achieve, having real-time access to their own employee documents in Workday. So that's it for me, uh, our experience with employee document management, and I will now pass back to Chris. Thank you for that, Susanna. Uh, once again, I'd just like to say how appreciative we are to have had you on the session today and how delighted we've been to work with Hilti on Kano CDM. Um, so uh, if any of our attendees today would like to learn more about the product, we'd be more than happy to spend some time with you. Uh, there are a couple of ways we can do this. If you're lucky enough to be attending Workday Rising in Barcelona next month, great, because uh, Kanos will be there and we've got a full range of activities lined up, including multiple talks and presentations. And Susanna here will, will be giving another presentation alongside one of my other Kenos colleagues, Damien Taylor. We've also got brain dates and one-to-ones where you can speak directly with our experts. And we'll also be hosting our famous Shamrock party for an evening of music and dancing on the lighter side of things. And there's loads of other great stuff, uh, details of which you can find on kenos.com. And we really would be so happy to see you there at Rising. But uh, alternatively, as not everyone gets to go, we can also arrange a, a more regular meeting uh, and online cons consultation. So um, I think now it's time for our Q&A. As I said earlier, please don't hesitate to submit any questions that come to mind. Uh, you can do this via the, the questions function on the webinar interface. And I do see that we, we have some questions coming in already. Um, so let me address these. Um, I think uh, this one might be for John. Uh, John, uh, why would we select this over a third party HR document management tool? I mean, I, I think 
it directly aligns to the challenges that Elaine set out, which I don't necessarily think a third party solution mitigates. So, you know, things like the user experience, um, if you have a different document management system, even if it has more functionality than um, what you would have in core workday, it's still a separate user experience. So what we wanted to do is make sure you had the same functionality as what you might have in a separate application, but have it directly inside Workday. So for that better user experience, more cohesive experience, um, the ongoing setup is going to be less because you're not having to set up Susanna in one system and Susanna in another system because it's the same user. Likewise, security, if John changes role, um, then basically that security is automatically associated with security groups. So there's less maintenance ongoing. And just from a document generation perspective, because we're inside Workday, because Kanos EDM has got access to all of the data from Workday, it means integration is slicker. There's no you know, overnight integrations between systems, which is technically you know, security consideration. Um, it basically means everything's in one place. So directly to align to those challenges of you can achieve better automation, better security with less work, and everything's in one view. Thank you, John. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next one. Uh, for you, Susanna, uh, what would you do differently slash what are your lessons learned? <laughs> oh, that's not an easy one. Um, I would say make sure all your stakeholders um, are aligned around the your design principles. So whatever decisions you take, everybody is on board. And definitely for the HR teams, the, the proper change management. So give them time to take the ownership of the new processes and, and plan enough time to test and, and for everybody get familiar with the new tool so they can benefit from all the features. Thank you. Uh, John, this one's regarding e-signatures, so I'm gonna put it to you. Uh, okay. can, can the bulk generation process also include e-signatures? I'm interested from an annual promotion round scenario. Yeah, I mean, th this was something that Hilti actually said to us that they would want. Um, and it was something that we were asking, you know, which use cases which we would have for this. Um, but I am pleased to say that we added that into our product last um, last year, where we can basically generate thousands of documents directly out of Workday, send them over to uh, DocuSign or Adobe Sign. Just for Isabel, who's asked the question, we have both DocuSign and Adobe Sign. Um, send it out to them. And then at the end of the signing ceremony or the signing process, we automatically file them back in. So it's useful for changes in terms and conditions, um, any annual promotions, any use cases where you need to capture lots of e-signatures. Perfect. Uh, and back to Susanna, how much time is needed for implementing the solution? So we needed a bit more in the first wave because it was the whole design going on. In average, I would recommend, suggest around five to six months, depending on your scope and depending on the level of legal alignment required around, for example, retention period. So depending on what you already have or need to gather. Okay. Um, then I think the next question flows quite nicely from this one, but I'm going to put it to Elaine. Elaine, how easy is it to manage EDM and do we need specific training or knowledge? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the Kianos EDM team conducts, you know, acknowledged transfers, which will enable, you know, a smooth transition from project onboarding to implementation, you know, across the entirety of your organization. So we would ensure that transferring the knowledge to the relevant stakeholders and um, you know, ensuring that insights, best practices, et cetera, are all covered within that. Okay. Okay. Uh, there, there's another question that's just popped in, and I think, again, it, it's kind of connected. So I, I might put this to you again, Elaine. Is it possible to migrate historical documents? 
Yeah, that that's that's also included as part of the onboarding, where we're able to migrate those documents and have them all sitting within Kinos CDM. Lovely, thank you. Um, so here's a question about the license model, which um, put to you, but put back to you, John. How does the license model work? Um, so essentially, it's just like a workday module where you have an annual subscription that is based upon your workday FAC calculation. Um, so just like Workday module in terms of an annual price for your based upon the scale of your organization and then a one-off or onboarding cost, um, which is basically going to ensure that you're onboarded um, for two of your countries um, and ensure that we do the knowledge training to ensure that you can roll out, out across all of your um, countries at the pace that you wish to do so. Um, so that onboarding is both getting you live, um, but also ensuring that you've got the knowledge transfer depend, you know, if you've got many countries to get live. So two parts, annual price, onboarding, one-off onboarding cost. Hopefully okay. that helps. Thanks, John. And I'm really loving these questions because they're kind of nicely flowing together. But here's another one, which is also kind of connected to that, John. But um, are there any restrictions in terms of in terms of how many docs it can you can kind of collect and store? Now, I mean, basically in 2019, and I can see that some people have asked questions about that um, in the Q&A. So at the end of 2019, Workday removed, you know, any limitations on numbers of documents that you can have. And that was one of the key drivers for us looking to create a system um, directly inside Workday. So no limitation. Susanna can probably keep me right, but we must be around a million documents um, or thereabouts inside your, your tenant now. Yeah, I think a bit less, but not far from that. So huge numbers already in, which I think answers one of your questions, and Andrew Lawson um, and somebody who's an anonymous attendee. Thank you, John. Um, you may have covered this already, but the questions come in. Um, so let me uh, uh, put it to you directly. Which e-signatures are supported? And can you explain what having all e-signature types actually means? Okay, so e-signature types, um, there are three loosely or at a high level, three types of e-signature. Simple e-signature, which is what most people will know about advanced e-signature, which you actually saw in the video there, where SMS was used as a second factor of authentication. Um, and that basically is to prove somebody's identity. Um, advanced also includes the ability to do uh, real identity checks where somebody takes a picture of their passport. And then the third one, which is qualified e-signature, is where you do pretty much the same as advanced, but you actually need to have a video interview with somebody or DocuSign has a brand new IDV solution, which uses artificial intelligence to achieve the same. So those are the three, simple, advanced, and qualified. And the reason why all three of them are relevant and matter is that in certain countries, Switzerland, Poland, Hungary, Belgium, Bulgaria in the EU, and China in Asia, they actually require you to have a qualified e-signature for a contract or a termination letter in order for it to be legally binding. So if you don't have it, you're basically back to paper and pen, and that's one of the real benefits of it. Likewise, with advanced in some countries, Italy, ideally in France, it's best practice. Spain, they want you to have an advanced level of e-signature. So that's the identity verification part. And I'm pretty sure Susanna will be able to elaborate more, but I'm pretty sure that even in the US, Susanna, your colleagues are using advanced for um, offer letters, right? In advanced or simple with two-factor authentication, yeah. at least. That's right, with two-factor authentication. So it's basically about giving you the means to digitize every process um, with e-signature, irrespective of the country in question. Hope that helps, Chris. Yeah, great answer. Thank you. And John, you're getting peppered here, but here's another one for you. Uh, hi, John. Is it possible to track changes um, HR is doing about an employee document? So does EDM cover does EDM cover audit proof file? 
I guess this is about auditing and, and tracking, basically. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there's probably three bits in there, Sandra. So I'll do, I'll start off with the first one, which is every document that is generated or uploaded is keeps its integrity forever, which means that when it's uploaded, it's stored into the system. If you create changes to that document, like and regenerate or re-upload a new document, then there will be a new version. And so you will always have the ability to see who uploaded the new version and you will be able to see all of the content of it. You will not lose any of the integrity of the original document. The second thing is we have version management inside our document templates. So document templates themselves will always have version management. So if you make a change to a contract, you could, when you upload a new version, you actually have to give it a new version, which means that at any point in time, you can jump back and see what the old version was. And then the third part, which Chris sort of touched on at the end there, is that we have auditing so that any changes to a document, upload, editing, deleting, um, downloading, changing retention rules, all of those things are all audited um, so that you have a, you know, the integrity of what has happened, who did it, when they did it inside the system too. Hopefully that helps answer your question, Sandra. Thank you, John. We're at 45 minutes now, um, but I'm going to squeeze in one final question. Um, John, does this go hand in hand with Workday's purge functionality? So the way that we would advise it, it in terms of purging is that Workday's purge functionality does include both data and documents. So the data element you should continue to use because we're providing enhanced document purging capabilities. So the data side of things, that's fine to continue to use, but for the purposes of document retention and purging, we would suggest that you basically use our document retention and purging for documents because as I hope I managed to convey, it's much more granular and it's much more aligned to all of the country's uh, legal requirements. So all that really remains for me to say is, is thank you. So thank you to our attendees for joining us. Thank you to Susanna from Hilti and thank you to my amazing colleagues, Elaine and John. Goodbye, everyone.